So today we had an update on Android backend for GTK merge request, and more specifically, first there's a review from Matthias. I looked over the API and build integration and left some small comments. Then he says I've put the Android backend on the agenda for the GTK Hackfest before FOSDOM. BTW, FOSDOM this year takes place in Brussels on the 1st and 2nd of February, just a few days from now. But most importantly, Matthias says that they should merge for 1418. What? <laughs> Oh my god, that's the next GTK version, which means it should be available in March, and in SDK 48, even as a tech preview or something. How cool is that, huh? Oh, well, the contributor is like, okay, cool, chill. Just another Sunday. And then you blame AI for being emotionless? <laughs> um, to quickly loop you in on what this is all about, it's basically two different things. There's the port of GTK, GStreamer, LibAdWaita, and whatever else is necessary for running GNOME apps on Android. And second, there's the build toolchain for creating and exporting APKs with the capability to publish them on the Play Store. This toolchain, which is basically a script that uses Android Studio and Android SDK. And I've spent some hours trying to build a Hello Android from GTK, but I failed it, so... Definitely that part isn't smooth either. But basically we write a normal GTK app exactly the same way we do for Linux, and it only requires a main function entry point that calls gapplication run plus a pixie would manifest. And that's all. And obviously the script will cross-compile both for x64 and ARM architectures, but that building takes a lot of time because it compiles pretty much the full GNOME stack, but I guess eventually we'll get a ready-to-work environment. So here's the catch. If you start a GTK app from scratch, specifically targeting Android and Linux, will be quite possible, perhaps even easy, but porting existing apps to Android will be a completely different story. For starters, developers will have to, boom, deal with all the UI bugs at once, and then they'll need to redesign their apps and separate the Linux from Android logic, for example, when they use specific GNOME APIs. This thing won't be exactly like Flutter, so, keep your guards up, and don't expect to see your favorite GNOME maps in Android like tomorrow, but let's do this video anyway, alright? And don't miss to write on comments, what GNOME maps would you like to get on your phone? At number 10 is Authenticator. That is, you see, it's empty because I don't actually use it. But if it was also available on my phone, and if it could sync things, BTW, and video, I talk a bit about that, I guess it could be useful. Certainly I would use a GNOME Note app. I got one I use, it's not even remotely close to either Folio or IATA's. Plus, IATA's can do Markdown too, which can be useful in tablets. Okay, okay, okay. People stream both their music or podcasts, but with 2 billion users, even if just 1% of them want to listen to music stored on their phone, it could make such an app a success. Um, that needs to fix a bit its mobile friendliness, but does it really matter? No ads, open source, and written in Rust, aka Superfast? I don't think many Android tools offer so many benefits. You know what? I believe a lot of tooling created by the Linux desktop community could fit in perfectly with the Android community. Drill baby drill! <laughs> I mean, download baby download! <laughs> Alright, let's get cynical. That's not the most popular chat app either in Flathub or in Android Play. In fact, I'm not even sure why they spend so much time developing it. But, exactly for these reasons, Linux nerds are gonna use it. Again, don't know why, but they will. If you read books, Papers is definitely better than the default Android PDF viewer. Not sure what PDF viewers are available on Android to be honest, but Papers is alright. Gnome users will install it. Others probably too. The best internet radio app for Linux, Android, and iOS. An app that can reach over 50 million downloads in Play Store easily. Also, it's one of the first GNOME apps written in Rust. Um, shouldn't it be easier for Rust apps to run on Android? Raw Note doesn't scale for a phone screen, but I just couldn't skip it from this list. And besides, you still can use it on an Android tablet. Look, there are much better Draw Notes apps for Android, but is it any of them open source or even free? Komaku's initial release was like six years ago on GTK3. And back then there was a library called libhandy that was trying to create responsive interfaces. Basically, Adwaita is its successor. Anywho, the point is, even back then, everyone was wishing Komaku was available for Android. In fact, it doesn't even make so much sense on desktop. We are not done yet, because on Android 16 we'll have a Linux terminal, and what's better way to access it than Ghosty? And since SwiftUI doesn't work there, we can only get the GTK port. Ha! Now, why all this matters? Obviously, 
GNOME will gain users, thus contributions. But it's good for Android too, because GNOME will give them back ads-free apps, but also some community culture. And with all this AI stuff happening nowadays, having a great community is way more important than just code, you know what I mean? But Android can teach GNOME devs some really cool tricks too, like using Firebase, making login systems, syncing stuff, and start integrating AI on apps. Basically all the things we're missing right now. Bottom line, everyone wins.